let's sum it all up. So we've looked at the data, the data is good, we trust the data. What is the summary of all of this? What can we take out of this session? Yeah, I think um, kind of, kind of the, the summaries across all of this, there are a number of things that we've covered, but firstly in, in the kind of life cover space, um, there really is an impetus on all of us amongst our friends and family and our personal capacities um, and in our work capacities where we have influence to drive this message of increased screening. People need a screen for cancers, people need a screen for regular health checks. And that includes mental and behavioral, by the way. Um, Vitality has um, mental behavioral screening uh, uh, kind of tools on the app uh, that you get Vitality points rewarded for that. And in healthy companies, it, it actually triggers off intervention if you're shown to be at risk. Um, and those things are really, really critical at this juncture because the stats are showing that that is uh, significantly elevated. We thought it would be, it is. Um, and so that's a real concern. Um, within Discovery Group Risk, the ways that we can help people respond to that, we make Vitality available to um, almost all of our clients, any of our clients who allow Discovery Health as a, as a scheme option for their, um, for their members. We make Vitality available even to non-Discovery Health members. We make wellness days available to non-Discovery Health members um, for schemes that have at least half of their members on Discovery Health. Um, and we've built into the core of our product incentives to drive people there. So our group risk payback, for example, gives people payback um, on their group risk premium every year based on either their health check outcome, if they don't have vitality, or their vitality status if they do have vitality. Um, the second one then, um, I suppose in the RCB space, mental behavioral is probably the biggest story there. Um, again, harking back to what I said about our, our, the sort of urgency around doing that. Um, and there again, what we're doing differently is working. Um, and it's important work to be done uh, of engaging pre and post claim to help people manage conditions that can be managed. And mental behavioral is a, is a key condition uh, like that. Uh, of course, our ability to uh, um, collaborate with healthy company, clients that are integrated, sometimes even fund healthy company where clients are integrated with retirement funds as well, um, it is a way that we are contributing to that real social imperative. Um, and then finally, uh, on the last points, you know, um, there's been a lot of economic fluctuation. A lot of people have had the opportunity to get their hands on their retirement money recently. Uh, with the two-part system coming in in 2024, um, and that's even going to be seed funded, meaning that there'll be, you know, a chunk of money put into that that people have access to immediately. The imperative to have incentives, awareness, um, and, and kind of, changed minds and behavior around how people think about their retirement money is more relevant than ever. Um, and we really believe we have the product that gives advisors and clients the best tool set to help shift and change and improve the dynamics um, of their employee base as they move towards retirement. Ultimately with just dignified retirements in mind for everyone who comes out of, uh, out of our employers. That's how I'd summarize <laughs> kind of what comes out of today. No, that's, I think that's the perfect summary. Thanks, guys, so much for sharing all of these insights. Thank you to everyone who's joined us for this session. We will be making a document summarizing all of these stats for you to go through over the next couple of weeks. But from me, thanks again for making the time. You can get back to your emails uh, and just have a great, great week ahead. Guy, thanks again. Thanks, Yash. It was real fun. Thanks. Thanks.